Hey y'all, it's Maddie from the Itty Bitty Homestead Committee. It is a dreary and drizzly day out here on the homestead and we just got done rebreeding Belle and breeding a couple of our other animals uh, because it is that time of the month again. And um, yeah, it's been pretty good and I thought y'all would like to see a one week update of the babies before we hop into today's topic. So Penguin's babies are doing marvelous. They are getting big. We are pretty sure that this little guy right here is a broken tort, so I think we've figured it out. Hopefully we remain to be correct. If Sadie would move her fat butt, her babies are also doing wonderful. Um, we actually uh, have mostly casters in uh, this line right here and one solid black. So these little caster babies will be going into somebody else's breeding program because I don't want to work with casters anymore, but they are adorable and it looks like their type is going to be marvelous because they are all chunky. And if anyone knows about raising mini Rex, the chunky ba chunkier they are as babies, the better they turn out as adults. Two's babies are doing great. We're actually going to start weaning them here in about a week. And then of course our singleton California out of Hawk. Um, he's also getting weaned here in a week and he is doing marvelous and chunky. Everyone is looking for treats right now. But two is doing great as well. Um, not the most pleased with this litter. We've gone over it before, but these guys are really sweet and adorable. Tati is doing great with her singleton kit and her three foster babies. They are getting round and fat. I'm very pleased with how big those Rex kits are getting under Tati. They are growing equally with that Californian. So I am very hopeful for these guys to get big very fast. Miss Vanessa is a wonderful mom. She has five little babies in here and these are all silver foxes. Super excited about that. We have a couple that look like they're going to have stars on their forehead. So hopefully that does grow out, but it's something that we would expect out of Vanessa because of her little nose mark. Um, if they don't uh, grow out, that's all right. Um, we can always sell them as breeders to somebody who wants to work with better depth in their silver fox program. But more than anything, um, I have a friend that has been waiting for a doe out of my silver foxes now for about six months. And he only breeds for meat, so he said that he has no problem with any of the babies having stars or snips for his program because he'll be breeding them to Californian bucks. Our little lynx kit is doing amazing. This is out of Solstice. Uh, they are fully weaned. I only have two of this litter left, um, and that is the blue and the lynx. So I'm very happy with these two. This little jerk yesterday got bloat, and I had to give her gas drops because her belly was huge. She's still a little bloated. I gotta give her another dose of gas drops, but she gave me quite the scare yesterday. I thought I was gonna lose her to bloat. But other than that, these two have been doing amazing. I love that little Lynx in the corner back there and she's doing marvelous. Um, I will say somebody uh, on my TikTok asked if she was actually an opal because she looks so dark on camera. But if you're looking at her in real life, she is very, very light. So she is a Lynx. It's just the camera's really bad at showing uh, the depth of color of her fur. And of course, this is the rest of One's babies. Y'all, look at all the chinchillas in here. She gave me six chinchillas in this litter and I am just smitten with the amount of chins we got this time. So I'm very excited. So the topic I wanted to talk about today was the discussion of making sure that you keep your barn clean and dry. And that is included if you have drip pans. It's that time of year when everything is a little more moist and a little bit warmer. And moist and warm equates to more bacteria and more things growing inside your barn. This is including problems with things such as fly strike, which I've been seeing a huge uprise in in our local rabbit group. If drip pans are left for too long, they will allow for flies to lay eggs in there and then their larvae will grow in your drip pans. And because everything is wet and moist, ammonia levels rise in the barn, equating to problems such as um, 
pneumonia and sniffles. So not only should you be dumping out your trays every one to three days, I highly suggest getting a bag of stall refresh to keep in your barn to put in the corners of your barns where it is always wet and moist. Um, I know in our barns we do have a problem in our corners because we have bucks that like to pee in the corners and then it builds at the bottom of the ground. We replace that stall refresher once every three to four days to ensure that it stays dry and clean. When it comes to raising rabbits, mitigation is the best tactic when it comes to attrition rates. The more you are able to control within your rabbitry, the less likely you'll have to deal with sick animals. So make sure you're keeping everything clean and dry. Um, this also is important when we look at nest boxes, especially this time of year. Nest boxes should be kept dry and clean and not allowed to sit too long within the rabbit's uh, cage. Um, what we normally do this time of year is we will put the nest box in with the does. We will let her birth or kindle into the box and then we will completely change out that bedding and put the kits back in. Um, otherwise, that is another great place for flies to build uh, their egg areas and grow larvae. And then again, you have to worry about fly strike. But yeah, keep everything dry and clean. That's today's topic of the video. And if you hadn't guessed what I am doing, I am cleaning the barn right now because it's gross. And I'm getting those corners really good. Um, we are going to be pulling out cages and scrubbing everything down. Uh, I have a wood barn. So if you are like me and you have a wood barn and you're cleaning everything out with chemicals, make sure you pull your rabbits out of the barn so they are not inhaling all of those chemicals. And I will put a fan in that barn until it is completely dried out and the chemical smell is completely gone to disinfect everything because it is that time of year and everything is gross. But anyway, I want to thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.